for me, what I'm taking along is, um, um, is quite challenging, an opportunity for the diasporans to take advantage of the new birth in the government or in the country as a whole, where we can all tap into the opportunity that is here for us to develop our mother country. What are some of the things that um, you had on your mind that you felt wasn't addressed? Well, for these three days, it has really been a marathon, and I believe everything has been addressed. It's now up to us to tap into all that has been addressed, try to localize everything, and try to work with it. So, I, in fact, what my expectations have actually been met. I've been part of this for the past 11 years because I was part of organizing the first homecoming summit in 2001. And unfortunately, all the ideas that we generated, they fizzled out. And then after the MPP government went out of power, the NDC were not interested. And we are back at it again. I think it has been, it has been, a, it has been a, a fantastic um, three-day event. A lot of positive ideas have been generated. And this time around, we're going to make sure that we do real follow-up, we do real coordination to make sure that these ideas don't fizzle out, they don't just become a talking shop. Well, what so, bothers us still is the fact that um, there seems to be some kind of tension between the Ghanaians living at home and Ghanaians abroad, and, and, and we can't get a, a, a real handle on why. Because we are here genuinely interested in helping our homeland, our motherland. I think on the other side, sometimes we are seen as in competition with people at home, and we are not in competition. We are all looking forward to the same thing. If this country develops, if we are living over there, outside this country, we can sleep at night and wake up without getting frantic 2 a.m. calls as to our family members getting sick or they need money for education and other stuff. So it's a two-way street, which will all be seen as development partners instead of competitors. We are not competing with anybody. I think it's a very good beginning and it must be continual because um, there are a lot of skills that are out there that if we put our resources together can help us move to a next higher level because as you could see if you go to any field outside like being it in the sciences the business world the humanities you find Ghanaians over there not mediocre Ghanaians Ghanaians that are among the one two top percentage so that tells you that is the Ghanaian population in one way or the other helping the developed world so if this kind of thing can be sort of continued in such a way that our highly skilled and brainy individuals can be sort of put together and be, become a tool in which we can even use as a driving force to entice some of our colleagues in the diaspora to come back to help, I think it could also be in a very good way in the a, in a, in a right direction. So it's something that I've sort of taken into, 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 into perspective on this direction. So I think it was very great to have like this kind of gathering of people coming from all over the world and uh, we have like so many resources, so many uh, a diverse um, uh, cohort of like speakers so and different experience from different generation as well, sorry. So I think it was very great to come back to the motherland and share and see how the country has developed and uh, yeah, have a lot of network as well. As well. So the lack of resources Resources, the lack of resources in different countries. I am normally based in France, but now I'm from France, sorry, now based in the UK. And like sometimes you don't know where to go when you want to start something because it's good to have an idea, it's good to have like innovative, like creativity, and like a lot of things going on in the brain. But you just want to put this in action to actions, and sometimes you feel like you just write your ideas, but you don't know where to go to make it like concrete and. Yeah, so that was the thing that I, I wish it could have been more developed. But I, I believe that we are in the step of going further and further into processes and like have something like more coming <laughs> into the next two years. Yeah. As you know, I've been here for many years. I've been here for 20 years and I really consider Ghana my home. And I know that they're trying to get Ghanaians back. I do wish that they would include uh, other people that are black people that live in other countries that are interested in coming here or either that come here and decide to stay, you know. And and I guess things maybe would work out a little bit better for us in certain ways, you know, because sometimes it's not always that easy. But, you know, it's life. And so then I think that there's certain things that you do, and if you do certain things and not complain so much, things work out anyway. That's what I have found. 
Yeah. We have been there all this year. I've been there for almost 32 years already, looking for someone to talk to, someone to tell me to come back home, or someone who tells me to come back home who know where I'm coming to eh? and what I'm coming to do. Because you don't just pack your bags and say, I'm going home. Bureaucracy doesn't give you any chance. You come home, you ask a question, you have to pass through 20 people before you even get a question, the same answer that you should have got three years ago. You see, so when the president came, we met him and he said, come home. And we said, what? He said, come home. Okay. It was last minute, but we bought a plane ticket, sat on the plane, full. Half of the people coming, were coming to the summit. So all over the world, you saw them over there. So what we've learned is that if we try, it will work. But we have to change our mindset of doing things. It's not always that we have to have, as the government, what he can do for us, like he said. But what can we do for the, to help the government? And this is it. At my age, I have nothing to lose. I'm not looking for anything. But all what I want to do is to see these young people doing something. Because if you say, you tell me that you've created jobs and the young people are not working and now I'm working, you've done nothing. I told them this morning. I this has been very useful because I moved down from UK eight years ago. I'm a business owner in Ghana. And around that time, there wasn't any point of contact for us to find our way to amenities that we needed immediately. So I've also been an advocate for people to come back to Ghana to live. But I stopped be an advocate about three years ago because the system became very difficult. But coming to the seminar today and um, has highlighted a lot of points, a lot of changes that have come on board. For instance, the diaspora community who are also going to be at the point of call to help diasporans coming back into the country to find their ways. Example, for even company registration or uh, to do with taxes, how to file them, and how to expand your businesses in the territory. So to me, this has been very helpful, and it would be good for my company now even to tap into the new resources coming on board. we the, the very first one in 2001. Um, again, we obviously he did the uh, national call um, to come back and um, interact and engage with um, Ghana, um, our motherland, and um, you know, found it particularly useful. Um, and um, as a result of that first um, homecoming summit, I actually procured um, uh, about 28 acres um, of farmland. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm not your typical um, farmer, but it's part of a PSI, um, Presidential Special Initiative, Linked to that particular summit, we were given some palm seedlings to um, to grow. So yeah, I mean we we, we did that, and and uh, by and large it, it was um, quite successful. So when we obviously heard about this particular uh, this year, um, the president, uh, as part of the obviously the manifesto pledge, um, uh, wanted to do a second one. Um, uh, again, last minute, I, I, I decided to again heed the national call. Uh